Windows OS X using either Docker Toolbox or Bluetooth Docker, which is sort of an older generation of that same kind of functionality. And, and if you want to look at their user guide on Docker's home uh, website, and it's a really good uh, tutorial that walks you through the functionality in Docker. Okay, good to demonstration. Any questions? Yeah, there is one other uh, OS called Rancher OS. Retro OS, okay. Rancher OS, yeah, it sits there and it's like um, a project atomic and proton. It sits there, it's just that bare metal OS. Okay. Thank the thing you. is, is that what's different from what I read is that not only do they sit there and have containers for the user apps, they have containers for the system apps too. Okay, uh, I've just learned about a new uh, specialized sc scale down OS, uh, Metro or Retro? called Rancher OS. Rancher OS, sorry. Rancher OS, which uh, essentially allows not only user-based containers to run, but takes functionality of the OS and moves them, a lot of those into, into, into containers. Did I get that right? I, I, well, I, it, the system, like, like uh, logging is a container. Okay. Things like that. Yeah, so services within the operating system itself are moved into containers. Okay. Right. Good, so let's, let's uh, Go to a live demonstration here, and, and hopefully we'll get this uh, live demonstration so far. Okay, uh, I'm running on a laptop, and you may want to wonder what uh, version of Linux I'm running. And uh, just to clarify that, uh, I'm running Linux Mint 17 on my laptop. That's that's my host OS. Okay, and I have two windows open. Both are both are both these are running on the same same uh, OS, or so to speak, so it's OS instance. Uh, Linux Mint 17. Okay. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is <coughs> show you the, the the base level command that you use almost for everything in Docker, and it's guess what? Docker. It takes a number of arguments. Uh, we'll, we'll look at several of them, but if you just type Docker by itself, it'll show you all the things that you can do by talking by typing Docker followed by one of these things, maybe other arguments, other arguments, etc. You can you know create servers, you can log in, you can pause the server, delete a server, delete a, a container, etc. You can pull a, pull an image from a repository, you can push a container as it currently stands into an image uh, location, etc. Uh, lots of things here. It, 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 just install it, play around, and this, this, will, this will be instructive. Uh, now, uh, one of the things that, one of the useful tasks that, 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 uh, that uh, we can do with the Docker command is find out what containers are running. Uh, I don't like this command. Should be there should be an if config docker zero there should be an interface named docker zero uh, let's see
Okay, it's installed here. Uh, Docker.io. Uh, why didn't Docker service didn't start up? Ah, it's docker.io. Okay. 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 Let's try. Start again. This time it should work. Ah, okay. It's good. Working. Sorry. I'm not sure what happened. Why the Docker demon was in a Strange state. Uh, I, I freshly booted this picture. Anyway, uh, so if you notice here, it, it's showing a, a, a table which is too big to fit on my screen, so it wraps around here uh, with the name of the containers, the image that it is running, uh, what command is running inside the container, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, right now, there's nothing. There's nothing running my system, so uh, so it's a pretty boring situation here. Let's try. Uh, I, I try a variant of this command, which is which says, "Show me all the contain, show me containers that I've run in the past." And and you can see uh, over here a history of the various containers that I was playing with as long uh, yesterday and etc. As I was setting up for this demo here, notice each con each container has a container ID, and that's that's how you name or identify the container here. It also has a more human-friendly name, and that name is generated on the fly by the Docker system. So this container was given the name Trusting Heisenberg. Uh, 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 this other container was given the name pa Passive pa Pasture. I didn't pick these names. The Docker itself picked the names. So I could either refer to the container by its ID, or I could refer to it by its uh, uh, alias, so to speak. Uh, and I was running a CentOS-like container, and in the past I've been running Ubuntu-like containers here. Now, uh, there are a number of images that are available in the Docker repository, uh, which is called Docker Hub, which is on the internet, and I've downloaded many of them for my, for my laptop. And here, uh, if I type the command Docker images, that shows me all the various uh, images uh, that I can instantiate in containers. Uh, various flavors of Ubuntu here. Uh, there's a CentOS 7. Uh, I have Nginx somewhere here to, uh, as a container uh, image. I, I did, at least I thought I did somewhere. <laughs> anyway, you, you can download this. So these, this is my local copy of my image repository. Now I'm going to run one of these images in a container. So this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, running starting a container, and I'll say docker run, oops, type, and uh, take a couple of arguments here, uh, and I want to run the Ubuntu image, and, uh, and then I have to say what am I going to run in that Ubuntu image. Uh, so just for fun, uh, let me just type the follow, oops, I'm not typing well today, uh, I, I just type cat slash lsb uh, slash etc slash lsb dash release. So it's going to, what it's going to do here is fire, take an image of Ubuntu, uh, load it into a container, uh, get the, set up the container for all, all, all the resources it needs, uh, set up NICs, etc. on the container, get an IP address for the, for the NIC on the container, and start up that container and run the command that I said, which in this case is uh, cat ls etc lsb release. So we'll, it should, it, it should, being Ubuntu, it should, should show an Ubuntu thing here. Uh, so let's do that here. There it comes. Notice how fast that happened. As I said, containers start up in tens of milliseconds. Uh, try, try doing something like this on a VM in tens of seconds. Uh, <coughs> so notice the, the, what is put out. It is an Ubuntu. Uh, uh, LSB release uh, contain, uh, contents there. Uh, now, 
Now, if I if I go back and see on my on my host on my on my system what uh, what what containers are running, uh, you would think that that container that I just started up is running. No, it's not. And the reason is, it ran, it did what it was asked to do, which was to cat L slash mc slash lsb release, and it ended. It's gone. So it's not, not, a, not running right now. If I do docker ps minus a, uh, you, you will see in the history uh, way back here somewhere, oh, right, right here, is uh, there was a container that ran, that ran cat lsb, ran 56 seconds ago. And it had given, it was given a uh, alias of Jolly Brown, basically. So it did run. Run. That's an evidence that it ran. It, and we saw the output of it, but it's not no longer running. No more taking. But let's let's make it more persistent for for interest sake. So we'll we'll run the same command, uh, except instead of catting at C LSB slash release, we will uh, run slash bin slash bash. This gives me an intro. Okay, look how fast that came up here. So it's fired up a container, started, started bash on it, and the name of that container is uh, this awful thing here. <laughs> okay, uh, now if, you, if I go back to my, and I'm logged into that container right now. If, if I go back to my uh, uh, host OS and I say docker ps, and now it's showing uh, that it's running that particular, and if you look at the, the name here, 90, that, that matches what you see as in, in, the, in the prompt over here. Uh, and it chose to give this name Prickly Thompson, basically. Uh, so uh, it's running slash pinch slash bash. Uh, so, uh, I, and, and so I have an Ubuntu-like environment. Uh, so let me explore this a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> let me uh, look. I'm logged in currently as root. You could go in there log in as, as, as a less privileged user, but this is the way that my demo is set up. The file system structure looks like just like the root file system on any Ubuntu system here. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and just to verify, LSB release here. We are running Ubuntu here, which is different from what my host was, which was running Linux Mint in that time. <coughs> now, uh, let me also explore what processes are running in my container. So I, I type psaux, which should list. Uh, let, let's see what's running on the host OS right now. Psaux. And it's, you know, there are several pages of processes running on, on, this, on this machine here. Uh, let's do the same thing on, on the container. Okay? Wow. There are two processes running. Okay. Uh, one is uh, uh, slash bin slash bash, which I, which I started up. And two is the second process was my PS command that I that just typed in. That's all there is running on this machine. There's no, 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 none of the demons such as cron, uh, uh, syslog, other things are, are running. It's, this is just a shrink down version of the OS. Now if you want them, you can install them and run them, but this, this is showing you that uh, containers contain just minimal stuff. Uh, <coughs> now uh, also notice that the process ID of slash bin slash bash is, guess what, one. What is process ID one on most Unix and Linux systems? In it. In it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, it's running on it's running on my host, and there is a process ID one on my host. But process ID one on uh, in this in this uh, container environment is as is not pointing to process ID one on my on my on my host system. In that sense, there's a separate process namespace, so you can have the same process IDs across containers, across uh, hosting systems, etc. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody had you had a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so if you uh, start up, say, for example, a uh, file manager at, uh, in a Docker, and you look at your hard drive, does that mean you have access as root on your hard drive? Well, right now, I'm logged in as root. Right. Now, uh, in, in, a, in a more production environment, you'd limit the, the privileges you'd log in as. But uh, 
for the purposes of this demo, I just have logged in as root. And whatever privileges you have, uh, uh, you're only seeing here uh, the, the, the file system that's, that's pertinent to the container. It is different for the host file system, and we'll, we'll show you an example of that. Including on the hard drive? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can I see the results of an, I, uh, an IP uh, address for each of those? Oh, oh yeah, sure, sure. That's, that's actually coming in my, in my demonstration. Can I hold off on that for a minute? Yeah. Uh, could you run one more container? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, let's try. Uh, uh, Okay, let's try it. Uh, let's run Gentos. Uh, let's see, what did I do? look up here? Oh, slash bin slash bash. Okay, I'm logged into, uh, I have a CentOS container running again here, with a, and that, that, that's the default prompt that it gives me. And to verify that it's CentOS, uh, I'll... Okay, so I, I have a CentOS container and I have an Ubuntu container. Okay, uh, I'm going to exit this because I, I'm running out of terminal space here. I will get, get, get exit the CentOS container, get back to, to my stream, and hopefully we'll answer some of your questions that just came up here. So in my host op operating system, if I, uh, I'm logged in as user run, and if I grab this in the password file, guess what? There's my entry in the password file. Uh, on the guest container Ubuntu that I just started up, let me run the same command here. Uh, uh, oh, there it was. I, ran, I did run it. I run it again. Okay. Uh, the, there is no user run. It has its own user database there. Right now, it, pro it, it probably only has root and maybe a few other system things. We can look at it. Let's see what's it. So, the, the, as I mentioned earlier, the user namespace is different across uh, containers and, and host operating systems. Uh, I guess, I guess, oops, all right. Okay, uh, there are several things here, but not, no user runs. Uh, okay, uh, somebody asked about networking. Okay, uh, uh, let's see, I, IP uh, no. adder show, and what's the name of the NIC here? EPH0, I think. Uh, okay, uh, so I'm looking at ETH0 on the container, and, uh, and the IP address assigned to it is that. 172.17.03. Uh, let me do the same thing. Let me do the same thing on the on the host operating system. IP adder uh, show, and in this case, it's going to be talking through Docker zero. And let's see, where is the address here? Here is the address. 172.17.42.1. Which is different from from this. It's got a different. And, and, and to show you uh, that this is even uh, relevant, let's try actually pinging this. Yeah, I can see they're in the same subnet. So you know, well, I'll ping it just just to let you let, let you see that it's it's a 16-bit wide subnet. So it's so uh, what what's happening here is the host operating system is now pinging the IP stack inside the container. Okay. Uh, now, uh, just I have one, one other thing to show you, and that is how the file systems are shared, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, so, uh, let's go to the root file system in the container, and I'll, I'll just show it to you. Uh, here's what's in that root file system. Uh, let me just uh, create a file in the root file system, and I'll call, oh, oh yeah, wait a minute, before I do that, I'm going to show you where that root file system maps into in the file system of the host. And, and that would be, uh, 
first I need to know the con full con container ID. In this case, I need the really long name for the container ID. The short name just doesn't work. So I'm going to say Docker inspect, which gives me a whole lot of information about the container. Uh, uh, and the name of the container, I forgot already what the name of this container is. Uh, name it Prickly Thompson. Okay. Okay, Dr. Inspect Frickley Thompson, and I'm going to grab for just one field in it because it, there's a gazillion lines of information that come out. And that's the full container ID, uh, which <laughs> is kind of daunting. But let me uh, use that to actually explore the file system on the host to show you where the, the container files are located on the host. If that's it. So uh, I'm going to do sudo ls slash var lib docker aufs mount and I need the container ID now. Okay, so what I'm looking at is the root file system on which which is uh, uh, there on for, for the Docker container as it is mirrored in the in the as it shows up in the file system of the host. So just to make sure that we're actually looking at that, let's let's just do a touch a file here. And 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 do so I created a file called Ohio Linux, which didn't exist before, and I created this in the root file system of my container. Now let me repeat this uh, ls command before. And guess what? There's that, there's that Ohio Linux. So it's the it's the same file system I've shown you. So that's I think we're close to out of time, so I, I'd be happy to take a few questions, but hopefully this has given you a flavor yeah. for for what containers are all about. This is just touch the service. There were lots of talks here that went much deeper than this. But hopefully you can, you can play with this in your free time and, uh, and, and, and actually have something now, some basis to hang all this information on. Yes, sir. Is it persistent then? If you can shut it down and power it back on. Thank you. Uh, question was, is the container persistent uh, or not? Uh, it wasn't because at, at the time, you remember I ran cat and LSB. I'm running bash in there, so that container is still there. If I type exit in bash, that container will go away. In the okay. in the in the, uh, the, the sample Ohio Linux uh, file will go away too. Uh, yeah, let's okay. do that. Let's do that. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to exit my container here, and let's let's look at this here. Okay. Now, now, if you if you want it to be persistent, then you got to run something in it that does something and keeps doing something in it. But anyway, yes, sir. The shared file example. How does it map user IDs? Who owns the file? Oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I wish I had. You, I I could have looked at that before I blew that container away. Uh, uh, in, in in the in the container, whoever created that file owns that file. Yeah, within the container. Yes. What does it map to on the on the host? Okay, let's try. Let's try. Okay, uh, on the container. Since I was root, it's owned by root. Okay. Right. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, the container ID has changed, <laughs> so I gotta figure that out. Give me a minute. Uh, I, first, I want to sue. Oops. Okay, the container is now tender bread tame. Okay. Uh, so let's go back and do, and do find the.
contain an ID for that. I have the ID for that now, and now let me look at the Okay, uh, so there is the file Oops, I typed that right Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Okay. Uh, it says root on the host, it owns, owns that file. But you can start a container as a different ID, right? Yeah, I, I, I could have started the container with a bash that was non-root non in it. In which case, the file I created would have been uh, owned by whatever ID on that container. How it would show up here, I don't know. I haven't tried that. But it would not probably not be root here. I don't know. Try it. It's not that difficult to figure out. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you guys for coming. Thank you.